Today I would like to preach about a very simple message. I believe it's very simple. Uh, it's called alone time. Alone time with uh, Jesus. I know that in Jesus, when we look at his life, he was surrounded by many people very often. He had crowds around him. Even at young age, if you remember when he was 12 years old, he ended up in the temple and he was surrounded by people. He was so busy, I think he was a, such a popular uh, person that I think he was 24-7 with people. Even though he was so popular, we can clearly see through the scripture that he would, so, he would get alone, he would isolate himself from people and he would spend time alone one-on-one -on -one, with his father. I noticed that at many occasions, and I will give you several scriptures to prove that, that for him it was so important to get and to be alone with God. I know that there are some things in our lives where we, it's impossible to live without it. For example, water, oxygen, food. There is no way. You cannot live without these things. And I also believe it's, it's understandable in physical world. But in the spiritual world, I also believe that it's, we, there are some things that we cannot live spiritually if we don't have these things. And what I mean is prayer and the Word of God. Very simple, but I would like to talk about different level of prayer. It's when you are one-on-one -on -one with God you get alone with Jesus. Let's read together Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. God is speaking, so pay attention. And this is what God calls evil. They have forsaken me or abandoned me, the fountain of living waters, and they built themselves cisterns broken that can hold no water. We all know that water brings life. Plants, animals, people, they cannot live without water. And here we see that God, he presents himself as the living water. Like he is the fountain, he is the source. Very interesting why God is comparing himself to the water. First of all, it's very necessary. There is no way around it. It's, it's a very clear uh, picture or example that proves to all human beings that a person cannot live, hap, hap, cannot be happy, successful, cannot have peace, cannot have this inner satisfaction without God. Impossible. I'm sure you know millionaires, billionaires, they have everything. They have health, they have money, but they're not happy. They don't have peace because the, the Word of God tells us that's impossible. Without water, you cannot live, physically or spiritually. We need water every day. That's another reason why, it's why God he is compared to the water. Because we cannot drink enough water for a week in advance. Don't you think that sometimes many believers nowadays, they come to church on Sunday and they believe, even though they don't advertise it, they don't say it out loud, but they believe that if we come to church on Sunday, we will have enough water to last one week, for one week, for the, for, till next Sunday. Seems like a, a good idea, but in real world, that's not how it works. You cannot drink in advance. You cannot drink one week ahead of time. You have to drink every day. And possibly several times a day. Physically, that's understandable, but in spiritual world, it's the same principle that works. We need to, to have this time alone with God where we get connected to the source and God is presenting himself as a, the source of water. You can have money, but if you have no water, you will be dead in three days. You can, you can be very, you can have nice clothes, but if you have no water, it doesn't make any sense. You can live in the greatest, richest country, but if you have no water, you will be dead very soon. It's impossible to live without water. 
There is, uh, I'm sure you have called about uh, dehydration. I did a little research, what de how dehydration, what are the side effects, symptoms, and how it comes. I went to the Mayo Clinic website, and this is what I found out, that what's dangerous about dehydration is people, many people, that's what it says on their website, many people, they don't feel thirsty until they are already dehydrated. It's medical facts. Nothing, it has nothing to do with the Bible. Just medical facts. What it means that I believe the same principle is often, often happens in our spiritual life. We sometimes drive to church. We, we, we become like, uh, we, we live a Christian lifestyle. We're using autopilot. You, you do things that you were taught to do but you have no life. It's not spiritual life. It's, I think it's rather, we exist spiritually rather, rather than we live spiritually. There's a huge difference. I don't want my kids to grow up and to be, and to be called Christians, believers, but as soon as they um, face any problem that has to do with health, finances, or relationship, they're out of the game right away they have nothing to hold on to because all was so superficial always like it's just you know it's it's kind of sort of fake we have good habits praise god you know for good habits but no life no life no source that's why the bible says jeremiah chapter 2 we just read god is God is saying that you left me the source of living water, which means that before we were connected, the, he's addressing here believers because logical conclusion is you were connected before. You had that source before, but the evil Bible, the God himself, he calls this, it's evil because you left me which means that anyone can be drifted away from God. You can, you can, you can get too busy with, with our, we can get too busy with our uh, earthly materialistic things. That's why many people sometimes they get spiritually dehydrated because they have no relationship with God. They don't have this time alone with God on a regular basis. They just go from Sunday to Sunday. Very simple message, but phys spiritually you, got, you get dehydrated. And often you don't feel symptoms and, and until, until you have no more energy. You have no more desires. You faint, you fall, you become very, very weak. That's what happens when you get physically dehydrated. And same thing happens spiritually. You become spiritually uh, tired or weary. You have, how, um, how can you check yourself? You, spiritual things doesn't get you excited. When a person is physically dehydrated, you can tell him, hey, let's go to, uh, I don't know, what's exciting for you. And they will be like, uh-huh, yeah, let me think about it. Or he, he, he might not even respond because he's so weak and dehydrated. Nothing will get you excited. No extra uh, service or conference or regular prayer meeting that we have in our church. Or maybe your own prayer meeting at your own house where you get with, with God alone. Just you and your God. It doesn't motivate you. It doesn't drive you. It doesn't get you excited. You're spiritually weary or tired or dehydrated. Devil, he always tells us that, you know, it's okay, you're not going to die. You remember this lie that he said to the very first people in the Garden of Eden. It's okay, you're not going to die. Same thing he's telling you today. It's okay if you're not connected to the source, if you don't have this living water, if you don't drink from this source of water, if you don't spend time alone with Jesus who is the source, who is the living water, it's okay, you're not going to die. That's what he's doing today John chapter 7 verse 37 Jesus is saying if anyone thirsts let him come to me and drink he who believes in me as the scripture 
has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Interesting. The invitation is only to those who are thirsty. Hmm. Why? Because you can help only those who are seeking help. You can only teach those who are willing to learn. Often in ministry, I see sometimes we try to help people who are in trouble. They have deep problems, but they don't want your help. You are dragging them out of their trouble, but they don't see, the, the re they don't see what, what's wrong. And you're just wasting so much time and energy. But unless you realize that I need this, I want this, it's not because he said so, it's because really he's right. He Thank you for reminding me that's what I need. That's why Jesus is saying, yes, anyone can come to Jesus. Anyone. He died for all of us. But here he is, you see, very specific. Those who are thirsty. If you're hungry, if you want more, come to me. Come to me and you can drink. Basically, Jesus is saying that he is once, we read from the Old Testament, now we read from the New Testament. And once again, it talks that God, he represents himself as the living water who gives us life. And the calling is very simple. Be alone. Get alone. Get yourself alone. Uh, secluded with just you and your God, your Jesus, because that's where you will get refreshed. That's where you, that's where you get life spiritually from that source of water. This uh, call is very personal, but we li we live in such a world that today it's so hard to find time to be alone with Jesus. Many believers they checked out and they have agreed completely and they have proven that for years that it's okay to just come to church on Sunday. It's okay not to have that time alone with Jesus. It's okay to just drink, I don't know, 10 gallons of water on Sunday, if you can handle that and just go on for the next couple of weeks like that. Jesus is saying, but to, in, in, in this world today, we're bombarded with news, advertisement. Uh, God is competing with, with our phone because I believe that the best, the, the most, the, the, yeah, the, uh, uh, we, we get alone so often, me and my phone, and this is the best quality time I think we have most often on a regular basis. And God has to compete with that. I'm not against that because I use it as well. But as long as it doesn't become your source of life. Because we get news from our phone, uh, ideas, advertisements, and it, 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 it affects our mind, our goals, our dreams, our mood, everything. But the real source that brings life, that gives life, spiritual life, motivation to live, happiness and peace is only in Jesus. Only in Jesus. Only in Jesus. Only in Jesus. And I will give you many examples how Jesus affected, impacted lives and families that were destroyed, broken, no purpose, no happiness, no peace. We'll get later to that. David, he was... Um, the Bible says he was uh, a person, a man after God's heart. Do you know why? So a few reasons. First of all, he knew how to repent. He made mistakes, but he was very honest and sincere with God. That's important. I believe God values that a lot. When we're honest and we, when we come, we confess and repent. Second reason is because David, he was willing to do God's will. The word of God is very clear about it. He was willing to do God's will. And the third reason why I believe he was a man after God's heart, because I don't think, I, I can't recall anyone else. The Bible describes so many, there's so many passages in the, in the Bible that talks about personal relationship with God. David and God. David and God. Let me give you an example. For example, Psalms, uh, 63 verse 1 oh god you are my god early will i seek you my soul thirsts for you 
my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. David, he draws a very clear line between earth and eternal things. Materialistic things and spiritual things. And he is saying that you are my God and he seeks his God starting very early in the morning. Very early in the morning. And he's saying that he's, once again, he's comparing this... Uh, desire to like I'm thirsty my soul is thirsty I desire this I go after this my my soul and my flesh and he admits that he also has uh, dryness he also has difficulties and he needs this water the source of the living water if we look at the life of Jesus uh, a few examples how Jesus would set this time to be alone with his father Luke 5 16 but Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer Lord God Jesus why not have a corporate prayer why not let's have a let's I'm for unity are you for unity let's do it together it doesn't mean that Jesus was against corporate worship he had many very uh, uh, big crowds around him and I'm sure he prayed with them as well but here he's showing us example or in, in, in his lifestyle where he would he would have that time for him it was important another example Luke 9 18 one day Jesus left the crowds to pray alone here we go again Lord God why don't you just let's organize a conference you have a crowd you don't even need to advertise you don't even need to spend money on advertising we already have a huge crowd let's just have a nice corporate worship or prayer no he left the crowd big crowd he left it and he went alone and he spent time with his God alone Luke 22 verse 40 another example where Jesus is saying to his disciples why don't you pray here and he's telling them that I will go and pray over there whoa 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 Jesus are you special why are you so special why do you have to go there why do we have to pray here and you have to go over there why don't we pray together once again Jesus is not against corporate prayers but he's showing to us again that corporate worship, corporate prayer, church services and gatherings, they will never replace your personal relationship with God. Never. It will never replace. It doesn't stay even close. You know, if I would ask you a question, you as a crowd, you can give me a right answer. But it doesn't mean that you personally know the answer. Because when it gets personal, it's very different. It's on a different level. Another example, Matthew 14, 23, it says, after sending them home, once again, he's dealing, he's ministering to people. He went up, in, up onto the hills by himself to pray. Yes, Jesus, he was a great man. He, he, he ministered to many, many people. But I believe that he would, re, he would get recharged after these meetings, after these prayers where he would isolate himself from others where he would get alone with his father where he would get this quiet time sometimes we also call it our prayer closet and here is the main verse that i would like to remind to all believers matthew chapter 6 verse 6 very simple message but when you pray not they pray not him not her you when you pray go away by yourself shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private then your father who sees everything will reward you question what reward will you get that's something that you can think about very interesting question let's go step by step first of all Jesus is saying when you pray it's not the question if if you are a follower if you're a believer when you pray then it gets very personal you 
not you plural, but you singular, just you, you alone. When you do that, then it says your prayer, your room, your God, your decision. More than three times. Your prayer, your God, your room, your door. When we talk about, it talks, go into the room. It doesn't mean that you always have to do it in your bedroom. It can be your garage. It can be your car. It can be maybe somewhere in the park. It's a place where you are alone with your God, just you and your God. I remember I used to go to the park we have next to our house. For many years, I went there alone in the morning. And I remember that uh, one day I took our kids with me and I told my son, son, this is where your dad spends time alone with Jesus. A few months uh, went by and we came back to that park and my kid, he was sharing with another kid and he told him, hey, you know what? And he was pointing to the, to the location where, where I showed him and he said, you know, my dad, he, gets, he spends time alone here with Jesus. I want guys, our kids, to know that my dad, my mom, they have that place, the secret closet, park, garage, backyard, whatever, where they spend time alone with God. It's okay for them to know. We are to model them how to live. And may God be on our side to help us to raise them so they would be strong believers, strong believers, not just by name, but by spirit. Then I was going to add, the Bible says very clearly, go into your room and shut the door behind you. Why do you think we need such details? I think <laughs> back in the days, some houses, they didn't even have doors. Shut the door behind you. Why, why, why do we need these details? I think they're very, very important. The door, why it has to be shut? Because of the distraction. What it sim simply means, cut off all distraction in the name of Jesus. Every day. Every day. Every day, be alone. Be alone. Get alone with Jesus. Shut your door, possibly simply means turn off your phone, put it on airplane mode. Otherwise you will be bothered, you have so many notifications. If it's not Viber, it's gonna be WhatsApp. If it's not WhatsApp, it's gonna be Facebook. If it's not Facebook, it's gonna be your email. Always bugging you, buzzing, always like notifying you about something. You're like, oh, I didn't check my phone for, for, for 15 minutes. Even though you try to focus, sometimes the Bible says, shut the door behind you. I believe that we live in such a world today. We're consumed, bombarded by information. There is no way we can find this time alone with Jesus because we're so busy or too tired or, it's, or something else. But we need to fight for that time. Did you guys know that um, medical facts, they say, it's healthy for you to start your day with one glass of water before you do anything. Did you know? It's not even biblical. It's just medical. It's good for your health. Start your day with one glass of water. I thought to myself, wow, so interesting. Once again, water. Why water? Hmm, water. Hmm, God, he said, I'm the water. I'm the source of life. You can have whatever you want, but if you don't drink water for three days, you will be dead. Spiritually, we, we manage to function somehow with one glass of water a week. Yeah, we are dehydrated spiritually. Do we enjoy the spiritual game, the spiritual life? We don't like to call it a game. We think we are spiritually alive and bold and strong. Really? It's okay to tell the truth to yourself as long as we are, as we are real with God. You don't have to prove anything to me. Just prove it to yourself and to God. Your God. The Bible says, you know, pray to your God. It's not, it's not, you don't have to pray to my God. Pray to your God, your room, your door. 
and you have to close your door. Otherwise, you will not last long. Otherwise, you will get distracted. Big time. I lived, I was born in Ukraine. I lived in France, in Europe, Western Europe for, Europe for five years. I, now, um, it's been over 20 years since I live in the U.S. And I believe, guys, I, if, if I compare, I strongly, I'm strongly convinced that peop, people are much busier in the United States. Full-time job, full-time college. Full-time job, part-time job, college. Two jobs, like, we're like so, so busy. That's why I think the message is so simple. Be alone with Jesus. Get alone with Jesus. Sometimes you have to shut the door. Sometimes you have to stop. Sometimes you have to just, yes, stop. And don't ignore this quiet time with Jesus. Your prayer closet. I think it's ABC for every believer. Go into your room, close the door behind you, and do this like a glass of water every day that, give, that will give you life. Spiritual life. Life. I mean life, not just knowledge of Christianity, how it's supposed to be. Life. I would encourage to do this in the morning because I believe, first of all, when we read uh, examples from the Bible, uh, we see that many people, they did it in the morning, very early in the morning. I believe your, your head is still fresh. And the first thing who you talk to, the first, you start your day with a glass of living water. Before you get, your, your head will be too packed with too many problems. It's okay if you're not a morning person, do it at night. But we all know that usually when people don't do it in the morning, they don't do it at night either. Right? You know, in South Korea, they have this um, movement of Christians that are so thirsty for this water. They get to prayer meetings at 5, 6 a.m. in the morning. Did you know that? Thousands of people. And I thought to myself, well, good, you know, good for them. Koreans, you know, they're like early birds. You know, good for them. You know, I'm so happy for them. You know, like, but here in the U.S., like, it doesn't work like that. You know, we have a different culture. You know, we are, have a different schedule. You know, in, here in America, it's a different uh, culture. You know what, it, what I did? So, yeah, here at 6 a.m., you know, no one gets uh, together for prayer. But if you only try to go to the gym 6 a.m., Whoa, the parking lot is actually pretty full. If you don't believe me, check it out. If you want to take classes, those who are, those who are booked the most, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., those, those classes are taken, booked completely. And when I look at this, like, wow, 6 a.m., parking lot is full? Yeah, it's a different culture. In America, it's a different culture, very different from South Korea. But it's not about culture, it's about priorities. Priorities. Glass of water every day. Water. I need water every day. Otherwise, I will have excuses. Excuses, excuses every day. Yes, yes, I, I, I agree that you have to sometimes drag yourself out of bed. But you know, you do it for your baby when he or she cries in the middle of the night. You know, it's about priorities, passion, heart, motive, love. I believe the message is so simple. Matthew 6, 6, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, make sure your phone is off. For half an hour, one hour, no one will die, but you will feel different. You will feel different. That's what we need as believers. You know, it is impossible to dwell in God, in the Lord, dwell in the Word of God without having time alone with Jesus. It's a different subject. It's a very deep subject, you know, what it means practically to dwell in the Lord, to dwell in the Word of God, to dwell, to abide on the vine. But it is, I know, I know it's impossible if you don't spend time alone with Jesus, it's impossible. It doesn't matter how, it just sounds good, you know. It sounds spiritual and nice. 
but do we have this source of living water in our life in our daily life you know that quality appointment with your doctor happens how one-on-one -on -one. quality deep conversation happens with your spouse when when you are one-on-one -on -one. God he spoke to Moses when when he was one-on-one -on -one. God he taught Elijah when when he was alone da God he taught something valuable to Jacob when when he was alone and today he's calling us my daughter my son how often do you close the door behind you not because you just screamed at someone and you snapped the door behind you you close the door behind you because you want to spend time with him alone first John 1 chapter 6 it says if we say we have fellowship with God but we go on living in spiritual darkness we're lying we're not practicing the truth but if we are living in light then we have fellowship with each other now pay attention to this you can have relationship good relationship and fellowship with other people with each other only if you have fellowship with God pay attention to the context so it starts with we have fellowship with God so it's kind of expected it's expected that you will have fellowship with God it starts with fellowship with God the end of this verse as a result you will have fellowship with people good fellowship good relationship but you know I'm sure you already know that it's very hard to have good relationship with people it's hard to always have good relationship with people it's hard to have re good relationship with all people it's impossible if you don't have fellowship with him but if you do you will have fellowship with others and God will forgive us our sins very important principle if you look at Jesus and his encounter and conversation with the Samaritan lady very interesting conversation Jesus once again he talks about their main topic of discussion was water Old Testament I read about water New Testament once again Jesus is talking about water it's sometimes it's hard to get like Jesus why why are you so watery why do you always talk about water I am water the source of water like what is what is like the big deal why why water so much water and once again Jesus is trying to get, give to explain her give her a deep point about water obviously she doesn't get it that he's talking about spiritual water she thinks about physical water but see the effect see the influence of Jesus because she was alone with Jesus that resulted into she was able to see herself only in the presence of Jesus when she was alone when she was yes it was not yeah that that was the reason yeah she she the bible says she already had five men five husbands do you think she didn't know that it was wrong do you think she didn't know that it was uh, against the culture against the god's law against yeah it's bad yeah she knew that that's why she came to the well alone back in the days they would go in groups ladies they would not come alone they would help each other and they would not come around noon when it's very hot but she would come so she would not interfere with other people she didn't want to see them she was ashamed of her lifestyle but here we go she meets Jesus and once again water water the living water water that gives life I believe that this lady she was looking for life more than you and me she tried to find success happiness in life at least five times more than you and me five men 
five marriages, for example. So when she was a little girl, she dreamed about this happiness, happiness, happy. That was her dream. Married once, didn't work out, but I'm going to pursue my happiness. I'm, I want life. I don't want this lifestyle. No, no, no. You, you're not going to ruin my life. I want life. She went after the second man. What was she dreaming about? Happiness, peace. Don't you think that's what we're going after? Didn't work out. I'm not going to give up so easily. No, no way. Third marriage. Yeah, 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 yeah. She is going after happiness and peace. You are not going to destroy my life. Third time, didn't work out. Fifth time, she is still pursuing peace and happiness. All she wants is life, not existence, life, real life. There is no life without water. No life without water. You can do whatever you want. You can marry five times. There is no life without water. Yeah, money? No, 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 no. You can be dead without water in three days with millions. You need water, water for your spirit, for your soul, spiritual water. Your spirit is dehydrated. Dehydrated. You have abandoned the source of living water. Yeah, maybe you had it a long time ago. May yeah, maybe you drink from it once in a while. What about glass of water every day, every morning? Go into your room. Pray to your God. Your room, your God, your door. Close it behind you. Water, source of life. She was blaming, I'm sure, people. This Samaritan lady, I was, I'm sure she blamed circumstances, family, marriage, husband, wife. I'm sure she blamed all she wanted. All I want is like happiness, peace and quiet. That's all I want. Missing the most important thing. You will never find it without the source. Water. And this revelation came only after solitude with Jesus. Time alone with Jesus. Jesus is much more beautiful than you think, much more powerful, will affect you more than you think. All you need to do is just give him time, give him a chance, give him time, spend time alone with Jesus. Why don't I challenge you? Three months, take three months, spend time with Jesus alone. Glass of water every day. You read the scripture and you pray. It's your quiet time. You close the door. Morning, daytime, nighttime, it doesn't matter. You, you might say, well, it's impossible. I remember one businessman from our church, he told me that he spends time alone with Jesus every day. He closes um, himself in his office and he turns off his phone. I thought, wow, really? You're a businessman? You're turning off your phone for one hour? He said, yeah. Of course, he does it before business hours, but he manages to do that because for him, it's important to live, live, not drag yourself, live. And then I, uh, when you think about, you know, uh, a young couple, a mother, you know, a uh, father who is like busy with like kids, you know, laundry, kitchen, cleaning, everything. You're, we all know, you're, uh, we remember our sister Nelly Chinkov, you know, she was so beautiful, inside beautiful, you know, she was, she would attract all people to her, like, why, why? I asked her that question directly, Nelly, tell me, why are you like that? Very simple, water, prayer, closet. Her kids knew about it, her husband knew about it. She was going through tough times in life and she had to do laundry. She had to do cleaning and cooking and, and all of the above. But water, it's all about water. You cannot get, there is no way around it. It's just water. You cannot live without water, spiritually or physically. That's why sometimes when you look at these, like, don't you guys think it's so simple? I think it's so simple. But sometimes... We miss this piece of simplicity in our spiritual journey. But, and, and we blame people. We blame circumstances. We're still pursuing peace and happiness. But without water, you can dress yourself up. But you, there is no life. No life. That's why we need Jesus. That's why when she encountered Jesus, 
this personal encounter impacted her life in many ways. Yes, she knew about her sins and mistakes, but in his presence, the desire came to move into the right direction. The desire came to change things. She was probably, I'm sure, I think, she already gave up. Don't you think after being married five times, don't you think you would give up? How many times do you think you need to get married to be happy? I think she already gave up after five times. But here, the, this fresh taste of water, like, I want to live again. I actually now want to live. I spend so much time, energy, on people, on everybody else. Like, whoa, but he's water. He's my life. Jesus, yes, brothers and sisters, Jesus. I know it sounds, it's kind of well-known name, but it's, it's about your relationship with him. It's life that comes from him. You remember Zacchaeus? He was also after Jesus. Zacchaeus, he had a desire to, he, has, he had this thirst to meet Jesus. So he was climbing, he climbed the tree. Imagine our vice president or minister or I don't know, uh, an important guy would, he would be all over Facebook right now. But he was not ashamed of making that step. But then Jesus, he is suggesting him the second step. Let's get closer. We're not going to talk here in public. We're not going to have this conversation, spiritual conversation here in church. Like crowds around around Jesus all the time and he told him Zacchaeus let's go to your house yes 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 let's go into your room let's go into let's go into the, this intimate relationship with me and you that's when it gets deeper that's where when you drink you don't you don't take a glass and you don't drink with a group of people usually it's a personal action you drink just you so he got into his house and now once again look at Jesus the impact influence of Jesus who brings life and water, the presence, this uh, fellowship with Jesus, the, next, the result out of this fellowship, Jesus, Zacchaeus is saying, I'm wrong, I'm guilty, I'm sorry, I will repay four times more. Wow. He sees himself once again in the presence of Jesus. Many people already probably told you many times who you are and how bad you are, but you still didn't get it, right? 20 years later. And I don't get it sometimes. But when I am in his presence, I receive a revelation about myself. There is two revelations. God's revelation and the revelation about yourself, which is also God's revelation. Very important one. And then the second result is it, it, it pushes you towards action action you remember apostle paul who was persecuting church he was so against god and his godly people but when he meets jesus this personal encounter once again fellowship encounter this one-on-one -on -one with jesus he's not asking lord lord god why he's not saying lord god why he's saying lord god what should i do jesus life when you have no life you're asking why you're maybe saying, I'm done. You're not even interested in anything else. But when you feel water, life comes with that water. And when we are dehydrated, we lose things. Yes, we miss out on many things, physically or spiritually. And sometimes there is no turning back. That's why please be alone with him get alone with Jesus very simple well-known name Jesus he is water you need this water every day if you want to live if you're pursuing peace happiness please isolate yourself on your on day on your daily basis and make sure to shut your door behind you and dwell, abide in him, and you will see the difference. God bless you. Amen.